Welcome back to our homeschooling series. I'm Debbie Jansen. And I'm Amy Williams. And we're finding out everything we can and we're going to answer all your questions. If you have some, please put them in the comment section or go to debbiejansen.com and send me a, a message on the contact page. And we are here to help answer your questions about homeschooling. So let's get into a few different things today, shall we? Uh, can you tell us why it's so important to be prepared to start your year with your children? So it's important because you wanna make sure that you are um, keeping everybody on task, that you have all the supplies that you need, um, that you just know what your every day is gonna look like. So I, feel like it is important to have consistency. So whether that's in, you know, at same time every day or that you do it, like we typically do ours four days a week. Some people do it five days a week. However you are going to do it, you just need to set a schedule, set a plan and know what you're doing every day. Okay, wait a minute now. You're kind of freaking me out here. Four days a week? instead of five i mean you can get through all of your material for the year in that amount of time yes because we can be more concise about what we're doing every day unlike in a public school we don't have to do transitions we don't have to do some of the bathroom breaks like they have to so we're able to get through more of our material and there are certain curriculums that are geared that way so they are structured to be four day a week curriculums. And then we technically do five day a week for our school. We just do four day a week that is strictly textbook, writing, those kinds of things. And then on Fridays, we do science experiments or field trips or nature walks or something that relates to what we're learning about. Well, I know how smart the kids are because they're my grandchildren. So I know how smart they are and I talk to them a lot and I'm surprised at the facts that they give me even though they're still elementary age. Um, and I knew that you quit about one o'clock in the afternoon, but I never really put it together that it was only four days a week. That's amazing that you can get through all of that material. And that kind of lightens up on you a lot. So as a teacher, if I'm guessing, if you stay with the schedule and the program, then you add an extra day for things that you can do, like the extras you said, or if there's somewhere else you need to be on Friday. Yeah, we can. And you can do the same types of things if you do a five-day curriculum. Um, some people find that it works better for them if they do all of the things that we do on Friday, if they do one of them every day of the week. So like on Mondays might be science experiments, and on Tuesdays might be crafts, and Wednesday might be art. So. It's just whatever works for you. The great thing about homeschooling is that you are the principal. You get to decide the schedule. You get to decide what we learn. You get to decide how we do it. That's the great thing about homeschooling. Well, you must be a really nice principal because Gracie always tells me all the time, I have the best teacher. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad. Do you think that this has brought you closer to the girls? Absolutely. I know my girls probably better than anyone because I'm with them all the time. I know their strengths. I know their weaknesses. I know socially where they struggle. I know socially where they excel. So I would absolutely say. And there's opportunities where I can see they have a breakdown, like they're having trouble learning something. And we can take time to sit down and say, hey, I see that you're struggling with this. We're gonna talk through it. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna work it out and talk about what might help them. That's great. That's terrific. Okay, so uh, the next question is, how long do you spend preparing for a school year? Because uh, regular teachers in public school, they have the little calendars and every little block has to be fi filled in with what I'm going to teach in this class and what I'm going to try to accomplish here. Do you do that or is it more general? Um, so it depends on the curriculum. 
that you um, choose. There are curriculums out there where it literally will tell you every day for every subject, this is what you do, this is what the kids are gonna do, this is, and you can just go through and check the box. Oh. So somebody has taken the time to make the lesson plan for you and you just have to follow it. And then there's other curriculums where you sit down and you plan out your own curriculum. Okay. So if it's something that you're not comfortable with doing and want to make sure that you hit all the boxes, then I would recommend a curriculum that gives a really detailed teacher's guide. Can you, but you can still add to those, can Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Okay, our next question, and thank all of you for sending questions in. We appreciate it. Our next question is, do you think it's more expensive to homeschool? Um, so I would probably answer that with yes and no. So, and the reason I say that is because if you think about the beginning of the school year, um, you're buying backpacks, new backpacks for the kids. They're probably worn out from the year before. You've got a new lunchbox because it's always fun to take a new lunchbox, new clothes, new shoes, um, all the school supplies, the list from the school. So you spend a lot getting them ready to go to, to school. Yeah, yeah. When you're homeschooling, you probably spend at least that much probably a little less on your curriculum. So you gotta factor in the cost of your curriculum. However, depending on what your extracurricular activities, you may not need as many pairs of clothes as you would going to school. You may not need a new backpack. You may not need a lunchbox at all. Yeah. So there are some things that you won't spend money on when you're homeschooling but you might spend that money in different areas, like buying your curriculum. Okay. Do any of the states pay you back for those materials? Huh. I wish. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, so. that is one of the things that when you choose to homeschool, it is a financial decision as well as. Okay, because I have heard that the government or some people in government are trying to get it passed so the money follows the child either to uh, the charter schools, the other schools, or to homeschooling. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be a push to get it for homeschooling, but... Right. So um, in most of the schools that I have worked in, we've talked about the fact that it's anywhere between 3000 and 6000 per year to educate a child. Wow. And so when you come home and educate at home, the money does not follow you to homeschool. It would be fabulous if it did, but it does not. So you can say then that even though you don't get the paycheck, you are worth six to $12,000 when you homeschool your child, <laughs> right? Gonna, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, one thing I will say in regards to the finances is, um, I know a lot of families who've been creative at coming up with the funds for that. So like in schools, they do fundraisers and different things like that. So I've known families in the summer times to do lemonade stands or bake sales or different things to raise those money or to raise the funds for their homeschool. That's really cool. I hadn't heard about that. Yeah. Neat. Okay. So about how much is a set of curriculum? Um, so it depends. Some of them are more expensive than others. Um, the ones that I have purchased have been roughly around $350, $400. And they can obviously be sometimes cheaper than that. Grade level plays a role in that because as you get higher in the grades, the books get bigger, there's more of them. So it just depends on the grade level. But ours roughly has run about $350, $400. Okay, let's say you have four kids uh -huh. and you've got a kindergartner, a second grade, a, f a fourth grade, and a fifth grade, okay? If you save the curriculum from the fifth grader, can you use it for the, f for the upcoming first grader? Absolutely. So they don't go out of date or anything like that? No, you can still use them and just buy the new workbooks. If it is something that worked great for your family, then I would say definitely hold on to it and reuse that curriculum. You can also, as you are homeschooling more, you can say, oh, well, this math worked great for this child, but if it's not working great for this child, I can switch out the math. Oh, you can switch out portions of the yeah. curriculum? So my first year homeschooling, I chose all my own curriculum. 
So we did this math and we did this reading and we did this science. So you have the opportunity to choose your own curriculum for every subject if you wanted to. A lot of times some people find that overwhelming, but you absolutely can. So you can buy the whole curriculum set, like find a publisher that you like and that you agree with everything that they're doing or it fits your um, goals for your homeschool and you can just buy the whole kit or you can piece it together. Now when you piece it together, you have to make your own lesson plans as well. So there's a whole piece to that, but you can do it either way. I didn't know that. I thought you just had to buy a whole set of like first grader. No. Oh, that's cool. And so when Sophie was in second grade, Gracie was preschool age, but Sophie was very interested in sea life and sea creatures. And so we did a textbook that was entirely sea creatures and Gracie sat in with us because she was young enough that she was sitting there. We read the textbook all together and she knows a lot about sea creatures now. That's why I got all the fishy stories, huh? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can you purchase used curriculum? Yes. And a lot of times I would recommend it. Um, so for every type of curriculum out there, or at least for a, a lot of them, um, there are usually Facebook pages that have like used curriculum. So they're like, let's say, I'm going to throw out just math you see is a uh, math curriculum. So if you decide that you want to use math you see for whatever age you're doing, then you can go on the math you see Facebook page. And there's usually like a buy, sell, trade, Matthew C, or Matthew C curriculum used and new, something like that. Just research it in your area. Okay. And then you can get on there and you can buy used curriculum that way. That's neat. And a lot of times if you want like a whole curriculum from a particular um, publisher, sometimes you can get Somebody bought the whole set, they're done with using it, they only had one kid, and so they sell it and use the funds from selling it to buy the next year's. Oh, well that's a good idea. Yeah. The other option for curriculum is if you are in an area where there's a lot of homeschool families, you can trade curriculum. So I've done that with a couple other families where I had the whole kindergarten curriculum and I'm not using it this year. And so I've passed it on to another family and said, you can use it for this year because you have a kindergartner. And when you're done with it, just pass it back. And then you can use them passing it back to maybe trade with somebody else. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, can the children share? So if you've got like, how far apart's Gracie and Sophie? Two uh, years? Yes. No, three. Three. Um, well, they wouldn't be able to share the curriculum. No, but there are certain types of curriculums like your history and your science that sometimes you can do together. And sometimes it's fun to do together. Okay. Where you just, you buy, like I was saying, the sea creatures. So I bought the textbook and I just bought the workbook for Sophie's age and the workbook for preschool. Oh. And so Gracie was coloring pictures while Sophie's answering questions and stuff like that. Okay. Okay, well that would kind of pad some of your curriculum because you'd be sharing the main part, right. just buying workbooks. Right. Okay, well cool. Now that would be if you piece your own curriculum together. Okay. So when you buy a curriculum set, it's usually geared toward a grade level. So okay. if you want it where it has all the work done for you and you just check off the days and the work, then you're probably gonna look at two separate Okay, I have a question for you that I think a lot of parents would, that are thinking about homeschooling would like to know. You're giving us great information, but when you guys were little, and I was very grateful that you had a wonderful school, some terrific teachers, and I sent you off to school. If you guys were tiny now, I would be wanting to homeschool, but I know nothing about publishers of homeschool material. I don't know anything about curriculums or where to find them. So if somebody is saying at this point, I want to homeschool, 
Where do they go to find curriculum? What are some of the names they can look up? How can they Google it? What's the main words to put in Google to get to homeschooling curriculum? Sure. So I would say Google is your best. Um, we live in a world where we have knowledge at our fingertips. So um, I would definitely say you want to think about what kind of curriculum you're looking for. So if you're looking for a Christian curriculum, you can go to Google and put in Christian homeschool curriculum. And that will take you where you need to go. And a lot of things will pull up. I would okay. say if you have like um, friends around or people around you that also homeschool, that's going to be another great resource. You are more than welcome to leave comments here on and ask questions here and we will try and answer as much as we can and yeah. guide you in the direction to help you find what you're looking for. But there are a lot of different curriculums for a lot of different philosophies. So whatever, if you want it to be all Christian curriculum, then it's going to be in this direction. If you want it to be all science based, it's going to be this direction. So if you want U.S. history involved, if you want it, it's really like, what do you want to get out of it? Okay, I'm technology challenged. So just for other people that are like me, technology challenged, I would, if I wanted to find, say I didn't know anybody around me that was homeschooling, could I, would I go on Google or would I go on Facebook to type in homeschoolers near me? Is that what you would type in? Yeah. Okay. Um, are you looking for curriculum or groups? Either one. How, okay. That's how I would find it. I, if you're looking for groups, then homeschool groups near me would be a great place on Facebook. If you're looking for curriculum, I would go to Google and type in homeschool curriculum or homeschool Christian curriculum or homeschool So do most homeschool curriculum. groups uh, get the word out that they're there? Um, I will say they're not all as great about it, but if you type in homeschool, you'll find someone who can point you in the right direction. Okay. All right. Uh, what are the pitfalls? This is a great question. What are the pitfalls of having a flexible schedule? So do you mean like we do school today, but we don't do school for three days, and then we maybe take two days off, and that kind of flexible schedule? Kind of. I can see a lot of us um, saying, well, you know, I, I really have this schedule, and I want to stick to it, but this is coming up, and this is fun, and, and I want to go over here and see Aunt Betty, and I want to go over here and see this person, and before you know it, you've missed a lot of school. So I'm thinking, that may be a pitfall, but are there other pitfalls and what do they entail and how would they interrupt the education? So for education wise, taking too long of a break, especially depending, well, depending on all ages of the student, I would say, but especially the younger age. So we are, um, as a typical learner, you are repetition. So I teach you a subject and we do something with it. So we either build something or we create something or we write something or we draw something or we somehow interact with what I just taught you. So if you teach it today, but then we don't do anything with it for two days or three days, then there's time for that opportunity of learning to be lost. So the student may not comprehend entirely what you just taught them because there was too much time between their actual like hands-on learning. We learn from doing. Yeah. So yeah. we learn, we can hear something, but a lot of times we, a student can be very tactile. And if they are, you learn from doing and you may miss an opportunity for full learning if you take too much time in between. So it's kind of like uh, the learning phrase, you, you say it, you write it, you um, draw it, and you repeat. Mm. And, and this kind of gets it going in your brain. And 
The other thing that I'm wondering about is children have different attention spans. Sure. So they may can hold on to information for 24 hours, but it starts lightening up if they haven't done all the things to really commit it to memory. Sure. So you're saying don't let too much time pass. Right, because you might miss an opportunity for them to grasp all of what you taught them. And the more that they can interact with it, not that it has to be a long time depending on the grade level, but if you do something, let's say with the letter A, and you never talk about the sound that letter A makes until two days later, that's gone. Whereas if you introduce the letter A and then it makes two sounds, a long sound and a short sound, A and A, ah, then you pick out things like, oh, there's an apple. Does that begin with a long sound or a short sound? And it doesn't have to be anything elaborate, but you're still giving the child an opportunity to use what they've learned. Well, you just brought up something else. Now, so it's like in psychology, I was trying to get you guys to practice what you would do in a relationship. So we would talk about it. Is When you do homeschooling, are you always teaching 24 7? Uh, I wouldn't say 24 7 because I don't want to burn my kids out on learning but I look for opportunities to talk about it. Oh my gosh look what we learned! Remember we talked about the dolphin and all that? Well look now this is a dolphin or what? like you see it on TV. We see it on TV or yeah. Um, we're reading another book where it talks about it like, oh, what did we learn about dolphins? That's super cool. Whatever. I look for opportunities that I can bring what we're learning into real life. Well, I'm sitting here wondering how many parents do that when their kids go to public school because they simply don't know that today they talked about dolphins. Right. So a lot of times I would imagine in public school and with my own, when she was in preschool, she would come home and I'd be like, what'd you learn today? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> well, if I didn't know what she talked about, there was no way for me to incorporate it into our daily life. So with homeschooling, you know what they're learning. I know 100% so. what they're yeah. learning. So I can easily just adapt it to life. Okay. Um, what are the different styles of curriculum? Or um, even if, I, if there's hundreds of them, I know you can't go over all of that, but when you go to look for a curriculum, does it have a description? Does it give you example pages? So you kind of know what kind of teaching you're getting? Yes, so as you were asking, like how do I even find them? Once you go to um, the internet and you find let's say, I don't know, homeschool curriculums. Um, let's say you want to do classical, okay? So there are a couple of different um, publishers that produce classical curriculum. Well, when you go on their website, they will have examples or samples. They will give you like samples of the teacher's pages, samples of the kids' work, samples of the books that will be included. And you can go through and look those up and see if it's something that you feel like okay. would fit your child and fit your homeschool. Now, let's say you order it and you hate it. Can you return it? Um, sometimes you have to figure out you hate it really quickly. <laughs> but there again comes back to the um, Facebook groups and different things where you can sell it. Okay. Well, this has been really interesting today. Um, let's see. Yeah, we'll, we'll take some of these other questions another time. Thank you for being with me today. Yes. I've enjoyed Thank you for this. Having me. Yes. Uh, we are doing a homeschooling series. I hope you will click the subscribe button and you can go to debbiejansen.com and leave us a comment on the contact page or you can leave a comment below and we will try to get to your questions. Please stay with us because we're going to go through this very difficult, detailed um, uh, subject and get to as many questions and help you as much as we can. I feel like Amy has become a homeschooling expert and I know she's a great teacher. So I look forward to talking to you some more. Please join us next, next time. 
We hope you have a wonderful day. And this is Debbie Jansen and Amy Williams saying good night.